My last video, I finished converting our attic into a maker space. This video, I'm gonna be making a box for the laser and a box for the 3D printer. I wanna do this to keep the smoke and the fumes out of that attic space. I'm gonna be making these boxes very budget friendly, hopefully still being very cool and functional. So let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is take measurements so that I know how big to build this. And I will add, like most of my projects, I have absolutely no plans, just some ideas. For the laser box, I found this 5 8 sheathing. This was the cheapest, decent plywood I could find. It's all gonna get painted in the end, so it really doesn't matter, as long as it's strong and does the job. So I will first cut these down to rough lengths with my circular saw, and then we'll move over to the table saw. About a year and a half ago, my son and I made a laser box for a previous box that we had. Unfortunately, we lost that one in a fire, so now we're building this one. I do have a video on that. You can go back and check it out. It's kind of an older video, but it's there. That box worked perfectly, so I'm basically gonna mimic that one to this one, just a little bit bigger, because this laser we have now is quite a bit bigger. All right, I'm gonna try to explain my next process here. On the last laser box that we built, we had a flat top, and then we came down at an angle. I'm trying to decide if I need the flat top. The reason we did the flat top on the last one is because we had the ventilation come out the top in that section. This one, we're gonna do it different. We're gonna have it come out the back. So I don't necessarily need the flat top, but it would make the door steeper, which might be good, might be bad. I don't know. I'm gonna draw it out both ways real quick and see which one I like better. What would you do? I know by the time you see this video, this will already be done, but what would you do? All right, I hope this shows up on camera, but here's what I'm talking about. If I had this flat top here, this top line would be my door. But if I don't have the flat top, this bottom line is my door. The one benefit to the bottom line, I think maybe is looks. It would just look cool to have a whole flat top. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm all about aesthetics and symmetry. I'm gonna go with the bottom line and just have a flat top door. Not sure how I'll do the hinges, based on that, but we'll figure that out later. So I'm gonna make this cut and then we'll start assembling this thing. I really need to work on dust collection. This is terrible. So here's a little mock-up of the box. And I think I just figured out my hinge situation. That'll be easy. All right, so I'm gonna cut this guy down at its angle and then I'm gonna start assembling this thing and then we'll work on the door. This should be a pretty easy process. Just some glue, nails, and a few screws. So this thing's quite a bit bigger and taller than I had in my head, but I need this size for two reasons. I need the laser to be able to stand up tall so it could be on its feet and be high in case we need something big under it. And the second reason is I want the angle because I like to have the plexiglass and I like to be able to look in easily. We learned from the last laser box that we really don't need a bottom. The last laser box had a bottom and it kind of made things tricky for a few reasons. One, if we had a really big piece that wouldn't fit into the door of the box, we could lift it up or maybe tilt it back, slide our big piece in, do our engraving or whatever we're doing and pull it out the same way. The other problem we had with our last one was airflow. I had switches on the side that I had created some holes for and those helped with airflow, but even those weren't enough. So we actually would take the door and we'd prop something under the door and we'd get good airflow there. So what I did with this one is I have this gap here that's probably a little over an eighth inch thick and that should create a nice airflow there. I will also have some holes on the side for the switches and other things on this laser but I think this will be a huge benefit. So I'm hoping this gap being down low and then we'll put the fan up high it'll create a nice flow and pull all that smoke out. I don't know. I'll let you know how it goes. Let me know if you have any ideas with this. If you have a box or something that has airflow, I'm certainly gonna try this. Can always cut holes or do whatever we need. Okay, well, the box is put together. Now I'm gonna start working on the lid. In this lid or door, I will be putting plexiglass, but unfortunately, I don't have it. I had to order it, it's on its way. For the lid, I'm gonna be using this quarter inch MDF. This is the same stuff that my shop is paneled with. And I have to use it because I didn't have enough of that plywood left over to make the lid. I actually think this will be better though because it'll be quite a bit lighter. It'll be easier to lift and get things in and out of. So when I mocked up the door, I was having issues with the door sagging right here in the middle on the top. So I made up this little cleat with the same angle. It's gonna slide in here and help hold that door. I also think it'll just add structure to the whole unit overall. Beautiful. Figure before I get too out of line, better make sure this works. So our last one was really tight. It was actually too tight. 
So this one I made plenty of room, so it fits perfectly. I don't think it'll be too hard to get to the material that we're laser engraving or cutting. And when we have a window here, we'll be able to see right down into the laser. I think this will work. Since I can't really move any farther on the laser box, I'm gonna move on to the box for the 3D printer. I'm gonna build this one completely out of that same quarter inch MDF. I have a ton of it left over, so it's perfect for this job. I'm gonna build this one very simple, just a basic box with a little door on the front, but I might add some shelving on the side for the filament. A little touch my son asked me to build. I'll see if this is strong enough, see if I can do it. We'll go from there. If nothing else, we will definitely have a box to pull the fumes out of the 3D printer. This box will be super simple. It's 25 inches wide, 25 inches deep, by 28 inches tall. Like I said, it'll have a simple little door, but we'll work on that a little bit later. So I gotta say for the 3D printer box here, I'm getting very basic with, very, very simple. It'll just have simple door with a nice little window in it, maybe a light so you can see the print. So for the door itself, I'm gonna stick with the quarter inch MDF, but I'm gonna cut out the window for it. So I've already pre-cut this door. Now it's time to cut out the window. The plexiglass that I ordered is 12 inches by 16 inches. So I'm gonna put that right in the center and I think it'll be a perfect size for this door. All right, so I'm gonna make a design change right here. So I was gonna go with this door and it was gonna overlap and basically seal against this. I'm gonna change it. I am now gonna do an inset door I'm doing this for two reasons. One, the hinges I bought won't really work with this style door with this thin MDF. Two, is there's a bit of an air gap all the way around. So we're gonna have a fan on this to pull all the plastic fumes out. So having this air gap, we might not have to have holes or anything in it. I don't think it's gonna be enough, but I think it'll help alleviate having to do a lot of holes or one big hole or something. Cool, I think that door will work. The only thing we need now is a little stopper on the inside. Get some glue on this and get this installed. Well, one of the pieces of Lexan came in this morning, but this is good. Now I can finish this lid, which means both boxes will be done. So let's get this cut out and we can finally move on. Now with the hole cut out, we're ready to move on. Next step, I'm going to dry fit the door, make sure everything works. Now we're gonna move on to paint. Well, the dry fit went pretty good. I have a little adjustment I'm gonna have to do up top, but I'll do that once I do final assembly. So now I'm gonna hit this with a sander and then we'll get ready for paint. Now it's time for paint. I have this very cheap black direct to metal paint. Perfect, let's get to it. Now that we have everything painted, we can finally move on to finishing these boxes. So I'm gonna work on the window for the big door first, then we'll move on to the small door. So with the windows installed in the doors, we can move on to the ventilation. So for that, I bought this computer fan, I believe it is, and we 3D printed our own parts. So this part will attach to the fan itself, and then we'll have a dryer vent tube hooked to this going out of the attic. We 3D printed six of these, one to go on the box, and two to go through the wall so that we can get it outside. So let's get these put on the boxes, and I think this is the last step before we go up to the attic. My plan with both of these boxes is to mount the fan more or less top center. I think that'll create the best draft, especially if we have holes down below, or in the case of the bigger box, we have that line down below to let the air in. So we can get those fumes up and out and create somewhat of a draft, hopefully. We'll see if it works, totally winging it. Unfortunately, I don't have a hole saw big enough, so I'm gonna use the biggest one I have to create my first hole, and then I'll use my jig saw to finish out the hole. All right, this is pretty cool. With that fan on, it helps hold the door shut. And I think there's enough of an air gap around the door for ventilation. I do have to say though, it is sitting on the table saw and there is the holes from the table saw runners, but it's not much. I might have to add some holes for ventilation. 
I know we're gonna have to add a few holes anyways for the power cords and I'm gonna put an LED light in here so I'll have power cord for that too. So there will be a little bit more ventilation, but so far this fan works great. And it holds the door shut, which is nice. I think I'll add magnets in the future. For now, knowing that the fan holds it, I don't have to worry about it. I wish the wood wasn't so thin and would hold its structure a little bit better, but that's okay. It works. It's just a ventilation box. All right, time to move on to the big box. And hopefully that one works as good as this one because this one worked really well. I'm gonna put the door on first. I just wanna make sure one more time that everything works and fits perfectly before I move on to the vent. That looks sweet. This black looks so cool. It's got this crazy texture to it. It's very thick paint, but I think it looks great. All right, the last thing I wanna try with this before taking it up to the attic, sweet, is I'm gonna put it back over onto that piece of sheet metal, turn on the fan and see if the ventilation through the front works like I hope it does. All right, the moment of truth. I can definitely feel that it's working. I think I'm gonna light a piece of paper or something, see if the smoke goes in. Ah, check that out. All right, I don't think I'd be able to show this on camera, but it definitely works. There's definitely a draft coming through this front gap. Unfortunately, it seems to create a little bit of turbulence right here at the fan. So it doesn't pull everything out instantly, I guess. It definitely pulls it out. There's a draft going to the back, but some gets a little turbulent, which is fine. I think when the laser's done, we just wait a minute and then it'll clear everything out. I might have to add a second fan, but that's okay too. We'll just have to keep experimenting. We'll figure it out. I think for now, this is gonna work really well. Next step is to get it up into the attic, get everything buttoned up and start using this thing. Well, as you can see behind me, I got the laser box and the 3D printer box put in place. I gotta say, they look pretty sweet in here. The black, perfect. So I went ahead and made this little storage shelf also while I was making everything else and it turned out and works really, really good as well. We have one pretty big problem in here. It's totally my fault. I didn't measure for this and I totally screwed up. But that vent that I just finished, well, it won't work there. Unfortunately, it has to scoot over about a foot. We want that port that we 3D printed to go through the wall and then the dryer vent will hook onto there and go out to a vent on the exterior of the house. Unfortunately, where that fan is now, there's a stud directly behind it, so it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to scoot it over, then we'll be able to push it through the wall, and unfortunately, I'll have to cover that hole with something else, but we'll address that later. So I'm gonna do that fix now. I don't think I'm gonna show you because there's nowhere for me to put the camera, but I'm gonna get that done, get that in place, and we'll install the laser. All right, I was able to get the hole cut in the box and also in the wall. So now this thing sits flush back up against the wall, and that little port goes through the wall, and then we will be able to attach the dryer vent from the outside and vent outside, like I said earlier. This thing fits on this desk absolutely perfect, and you can see my little air gap all along the front. Like I said, I'll have to make something to cover up the original hole, but that's okay, we'll address that later. So I need to order some LED lights, I need to attach the dryer vent. There's quite a bit of work left to do behind the scenes, so let's get all that buttoned up and I'll be back to show you the rest of it. Well, it's been about a week and I think we got these boxes dialed in. So I'll start with the 3D printer box. It is absolutely perfect. I haven't changed a single thing. That one little fan works perfect, holds the door, it vents well. Perfect. You might be able to see though, there's no 3D printer in there. We've been having some serious complications with it lately, so it's on the workbench. We're trying to get it dialed in. We have ran it a little bit in that box and it did work great. Onto the laser box. The laser box has had several changes. I still have not fixed the hole in the back because the 3D printer is down and my plasma table is also down. So I can't build a cover just yet, but I'll get to that. We ended up adding a much, much, beefier fan. This thing sounds like a jet taken off and it completely clears this box. Because of buying that fan, we had an extra one. So we mounted it to the side here and it helps a little bit, but it kind of creates some turbulence inside the box. It's not perfect, but it works. We get some weird turbulence right about center of the box for some reason. With both fans, with one fan, no matter what, we get some smoke that just hovers in the middle. 
but the new fan, it clears out pretty fast, not a big deal. As you can see, we added these little lights. These work really, really well. We like the lights a lot, makes a huge difference in all the boxes. We still need to make a handle, but again, we're waiting on the 3D printer for that. Other than that, these boxes are great. My son's been running the laser a ton and we've had zero issues with it. I'm super happy I went with this style of door. One main reason for that is just the amount of space that we have when we open this door. It's really, really easy to get the laser in. It's easy to get any big pieces of wood or anything we're engraving in there. The last box that we had, it, it was kind of tight because of that flat top. So I'm super happy that I went with this. Also, I think it just looks really, really good. What do you think? I, well, I think that completes these boxes. I'm super happy with the way they turned out. I will have links to everything we used for these boxes down below. I highly recommend some of these things, especially the second fan that we got. It's great. Go check out the other laser box video of ours. That box was really good. It worked really well. There's some good features to that box also. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.